It's been the home of the University of Tulsa basketball for some time here and a very popular facility here. The Reynolds Center holds 8,355 as compared to Cincinnati's home, their fifth, third arena, uh, capacity 13,176. On this American Digital Network, it's very appropriate we take a pause here as we uh, honor America with our national anthem. Well, the American Athletic Conference can really go all the way back to 1979 and had its roots with the old Big East and stuff. And then, of course, with all the turmoil is uh, <laughs> with the 2010-2013 uh, uh, 2013 NCAA realignment, it has become now uh, really the newest of conferences. The American Athletic Conference, 14 uh, members will be 15 next year. The Naval Academy joins the group. Wow, that's that's pretty impeccable. I think I think this is a really good conference. You have teams that have never played each other coming in, and then you have teams with a long history of winning like UConn. So you kind of get the, the best of both worlds. Everybody's going to have to step up their game in this conference, and I think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out throughout the year. 11 full members uh, representing 10 states across the uh, country, California, Connecticut, Florida, Louisiana, North Carolina, Ohio, here in Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and Texas. That's the Naval Academy uh, in Annapolis, Maryland, will be joining the uh, conference next season. Lights go out as they get ready for their display on the video board overhead to uh, introduce the University of Tulsa to the fans here at the Reynolds Center this afternoon. This uh, 2 o'clock tip here on this final day of 2014. <laughs> Liz, how were the holidays? The holidays were good, very busy. <laughs> I should let people know you're a native of Oklahoma City, you yes. went to Oklahoma City Southeast High School. Then uh, you escaped the Sooners, the Cowgirls, and headed all the way to the uh, Northwest and a uh, great career at the University of Washington as a Husky. I did. I loved it there, but, you know, Oklahoma's home, so I came back, and I love it here, and I just like being close to my family and stuff, but... Yes, the holidays were good, and everybody was around, and it is freezing here today. It's, I, yes. I, I had to start up my car early. I think it's like maybe feels like 15 degrees outside. Yeah, I think the actual temperature on 23, but the wind chill in Oklahoma, <laughs> right. as you always know, drops it there. Talk about contrast. I'm always amazed this uh, this conference at the University of Central Florida. Just amazing to me. They have an enrollment of 59,770. Now, the second largest school in the American Athletic Conference is actually the University of Cincinnati. The Bearcats uh, host uh, 42,656 students in their enrollment. Then you go all the way this down to the University of Tulsa, the smallest school, not just an American <laughs> conference, but also the smallest in all Division I NCAA. The enrollment here at the University of Tulsa, private school, 4,352. Wow. So quite a contrast. Yes. I think you get the best of both worlds with a big school. You know, you can experience a lot. You gotta have a lot of everything going on. And then with a smaller school, you kind of get that at-home atmosphere. So, yes, definitely the best of both worlds. The University of Tulsa women's basketball team, as we introduce them to you, their starting lineup. Getting ready for an opening tip here. We tell you some men's basketball scores. Uh, University of Tulsa this afternoon on the road at Central Florida in men's play. Uh, held on to win 56-54 to get their opening conference win in the school's history for men's basketball on the road. And also uh, this afternoon, it was Tulane winning at East Carolina 67-59. So, Liz, the road teams have won both the early games so far in the men's play in the American Athletic Conference today. Well, we can see who's going to win this game today. <laughs> That's right. There's the bench over there, boy, Jamel Elliott. There's the head coach of the Bearcats. She has her game face on, and 
I tell you, she's one of the accomplished women. You mentioned earlier, she won a national championship while playing at Connecticut, then was part of five more national championships as an assistant coach. Her championship as a player was 1996. And she does keep her game face on. When she was coming out for interview earlier, I was like, oh, she's very serious today. <laughs> we're ready to tip it up here. Cincinnati and Tulsa, and we're underway at the Reynolds Center at TU, and Tulsa wins the opening tip. Again, the Golden Hurricane, their white uniforms trimmed in blue and gold, and we'll have the Bearcats here in their uh, road black with their red trim. In the lane with a shot up and up, no good by Ashley Clark. Rebound comes down to the Bearcats and Owen. She's missed everything for this team. Oh, symbols and falls. Turnover picked up by TU. That's Tiana Reed, who's a late starter in the uh, starting lineup for the Golden Hurricane. The corner, Anthony Webster there. Now it goes inside to Kelsey Grovey. And a nice inside move and up and around. No good. The shot by Mariah Turner. Back come the Bearcats again, keyed by Anna Owens. Mariah Turner always works hard down low. You see her posting column for the ball. It looks like they're going to try and feed her. Outside it comes here to uh, Quisenberry. Quisenberry now. Over it goes to Jamison. Jamison tries to drive. She loses it. Second straight turnover for the Bearcats. Back come the Golden Hurricane. TU on the run. And trying to get up there with a shot. Number four, Chana Reed, but knocked away there. And it'll be... Golden Hurricane basketball under their basket. You see Tulsa really trying to set the tempo right now. Tiana Reed isn't wasting any time getting up the floor. She's expecting everyone to push. Inbound pass to Turner. Hands it over to Grovey. She's the guy who kind of gets things going for the Golden Hurricane offense. Kelsey now takes the long three. Porter swish. First points of the game. TU with a three. Not a bad shot for Grovey. The 29% three-point shooter. He can't leave her open. Bianca Quisenberry brings the Bearcats back on the attack. They're looking for their first bucket here as we uh, come to the 18-30 mark of the game. Stolen away. That's the third turnover for Cincinnati. Back come the Golden Hurricane. Groby all the way and lays it up with the left hand and in. And a quick timeout for Coach uh, Jamel Elliott. She can't be pleased with these turnovers really on, Liz. Probably not too happy right now. Tulsa's really putting Cincinnati back on their heels a little bit. They're pushing the ball up the floor defensively. They're trying to stop the ball early. I think it's just taking Cincinnati a little while to warm up and kind of fill out what Tulsa's trying to do. You mentioned freshman Anna Owen. She's been selected to honor her for a fourth straight week here in the American Athletic Conference. We'll be seeing her. She's, uh, uh, when they're on the floor, number three, kind of keys the action for them. And she's been quite a story. Statistically, these teams are very close here, Liz. Uh, Tulsa uh, scoring uh, 68.7 a game, giving up 66.5. Cincinnati scoring 60.6, giving up 64.8. So it is a pretty evenly matched game. They just have to, Cincinnati just has to figure out what it is they want to do and how to keep Tulsa from, from stealing the ball. Quisenberry into the front court for the Bearcats. Brandy Tarver is in there now, now, number 13. Whitfield into the lane, needs some help. And it's going to be three seconds. Yeah, that, well, number, turnover number four, Liz. You yeah. can see that coming. And you see Cincinnati trying to move offensively. They're kind of passing it around the perimeter. There's somebody flashing towards the middle. They're trying to see what's going to happen in the paint, but you can't get stuck there. Everybody has to keep moving. Early on here in our American Digital Network telecast, the University of Tulsa, the host team leading 5-0 over Cincinnati as the Golden Hurricane back on the attack. Outside shot by Turner, off the front of the rim, no good. And a foul call underneath. Foul is going to be on uh, the Bearcats' uh, Brandy Tarver. First personal, first team foul in this game. Reed puts it in. Hurricane moving around the left side now. Ashley Clark open for a quick shot, and she hits it. Wow. Tulsa's jumped out to a 7 nothing lead. They really have. They're ready to play opening day of conference play. And Ashley Clark, their leading scorer with 14-7. and seven. She's expected to do a lot this season. Quisenberry, 22 the basketball for Cincinnati. And oh, and she's got to get going and get to her team going here. Just a freshman, but... Uh, Averaging 13 and a half points a game. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Bearcats, but only four seconds to shoot here, Liz. Tulsa playing some really good defense. They're denying the passes. They're staying with their players. They're not letting anyone really just roam freely, and they're really excited about that. You see the bench getting involved, cheering on their team. So I, th I would say Tulsa has the energy right now. Mackenzie Kent just came in the game. She uh, throws the inbound pass. Two seconds, one, taking the shot away short. 
shot clock violation. Mackenzie Can came in, replacing uh, Jasmine Whitfield for Cincinnati. Mackenzie's a protective mask on her face from a, a little nose injury earlier in the season. So back come the Golden Hurricane, uh, coming down to the 17-minute mark in this first half, and Tulsa with a 7-0 lead. It's been all Golden Hurricane so far. Shot up, no good by Webster. Battle in the corner there, and they save it. Let's see. It's going to stay with Tulsa. And that was just really good hustle there by Tiana Reed. Everyone kind of thought the ball was going out, and she just came out of nowhere from behind and tried to knock it off Cincinnati, and she did. So that's amazing hustle play for her. With a fresh 30-second clock, Golden Hurricane with a 7-0 lead. Antoinette Webster, number 15, is in the game for the Golden Hurricane now. Inside, Mariah Turner turns off the side of the uh, backboard. Tipped around, now the Golden Hurricane get it right back. Pass inside, it goes, and now double team, not able to get a shot as Ashley Clark puts it outside to Webster. And Tulsa will reset here. 20 seconds left on the uh, possession clock. Plenty of time here. Oh, Webster now throws it away, and it'll be Tulsa's first turnover. Picked up by Owens. Owens stops, hits, takes a shot. No good. Rebound. That, by the way, Liz, that's the first shot attempt for Cincinnati. Played almost four minutes of this game. And that's not a bad shot attempt. She saw that she had the open jumper. Her team wasn't really running with her. It was a kind of two-on-one situation, and so she pulled up, and she has good, good enough stats to be able to do that. But they should have gotten a shot up prior to that one shot. Traveling call on Tulsa. Tulsa 3 and 8. The Bearcats 0 and 1 so far. Tulsa leading 7 0. Outside, uh, taking the shot. No, it's short there by Mackenzie Can. Back come the Golden Hurricane. Keyed again by Tiana Reed. She's a sophomore. Webster, Clark, back to Grovey. Tulsa looking to try to work the ball inside. And there it is inside. It goes left hand left. It's up and in by Mariah Turner. And, and you see Turner down there calling for the ball. When the ball goes away, away from her, she waits for a second. When it comes back to her side, she's posting up really hard calling for the ball. And they're finding her. Got our first whistle against the Golden Hurricane. And we're going to the uh, 16 minutes. The first media timeout comes up here as well. We'll be taking our first break here as well. The University of Tulsa dominant so far in the first four and a half minutes of play here. It's Tulsa 9, Cincinnati nothing. You're watching American Athletic Conference Basketball on the American Digital Network. It's learning with the best minds and in the best organizations. Cincinnati Smart is impressing your professor and your boss in the same week. It's smart on a whole different level. Cincinnati Smart is who you become, it's your competitive edge, and you can only get it at the University of Cincinnati. Welcome back to the Reynolds Center on the campus of the University of Tulsa in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Chris Lincoln along with the former University of Washington Husky star and Liz Lay. And Liz, the uh, Huskies looking at the, uh, the Bearcats, I should say, <laughs> looking for some answers here. Uh, played four and a half minutes this game, and they're still looking for their first points. It's taking them a little while. It's still taking them time to figure out what it is that they are trying to do or how to stop Tulsa from, you know, really picking apart their offense the way they are. Tulsa's playing really good defense. They're denying the pass. They're not letting anyone roam freely. And Cincinnati has five turnovers because of that. So I think Tulsa's doing a good job defensively. Offensively, Cincinnati needs to find a way to either move the ball or get it inside or just get some shots up just so they can get warm. Interesting. Uh, of the nine points Tulsa has, Liz, seven of them have come off those Bearcat turnovers. You got to take care of the ball, you know, when you're on the road and and it's, it's a team that you haven't played before. You're not sure what they're going to do, but you have to take care of the ball in any, in any case. That's right. The first meeting in history between these two schools with great basketball history and traditions. Uh, University of Tulsa jumping out to this uh, nine and nothing lead so far. They've uh, hit four of their nine shots. Uh, the Bearcats uh, still looking for their first points. 0 for 2, and including 0 for 1 from three points. Well, they're cold now, but I will tell you that Anna Owens and Marley Hill are their go-to players um, so far this season. So once they get warmed up, it should turn around a little bit because the team goes as they go. That's what Coach Jamel Elliott has said. So um, we'll just see if they can turn it on a little bit. Out of that uh, first media timeout, they have a fresh 30-second game clock to work with. 
as uh, Jamal Elliott uh, spent some time diagramming up some action here and see if they can break out of this uh, scoring. It's cold right now. <laughs> the outside temperatures <laughs> in Tulsa, I think, Liz. Officials are taking a look at a replay here, and uh, as they're doing that, we'll take a look at some of the earlier action here, and it said it's been all Tulsa so far in this one. And you just see Tulsa moving the ball well. That was Kelsey Grovey knocking down that three-pointer from up top. Here she is again with the pick defensively and just takes it all the way down the left side, finishes nice on the left hand. Kelsey layup. with five of the nine points for the Golden Hurricane. Now we're back to the live action here. Anna Owens, double team. They know about her, certainly, over to uh, Tarver. Tarver's going to take the shot in the lane, and yes, there it is, the Bearcats' first field goal at 15-19 left to play in the first half. It's now 9-2 Tulsa, and back come the Golden Hurricane. So coming out of the break, Coach must have said something because they look like they have a little bit more energy. Ashley Clark, give and go over to Groby, knocked away. It's going to be a foul. Nope, three-second violation. Three-second violation, turnover against TU. So now the Bearcats trying to get back in this one. And Owens, freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, averaging 13 and a half points, five rebounds plus a game. She's without doubt their leader and a good three-point shooter like that. Hey, thank you, Anna. Right on cue, Liz. <laughs> right. She is a really good three-point shooter. As a matter of fact, she's shooting 50% from the three-point line wow. as of now, which is incredible for a freshman, incredible for any guard, really. So she definitely is somebody you don't want to leave open. As another turnover for the Golden Hurricane, back here comes Cincinnati. Driving and laying it off, and no shot. And Owens tried to get it there. She got nice feed back from Mackenzie Can, but a foul going to be called. Owens really runs the floor well. And like as soon as they get the ball and they're heading towards the basket, there she is next to next to them, just running with them. So that's that's really good. She's trying to get the offense going in some way. And a 75% plus free throw shooter on the season. Crazy thing about basketball is this always amazes me. It's nine nothing Tulsa, and just that quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's about to be a two point game if uh, Anna hits the second free throw, and there she is, and nine seven. Wow. Yeah, and basketball really is a game of, of changes and momentums. Like the first media, Tulsa had the momentum, and now Cincinnati has the momentum. So just like that, you can get back into a game. Just a few possessions. Meyer Turner's trying to get Ashley Clark involved in the offense. The nice pass inside, but down too deep. They could not get a basket and a shot up. Roby now goes back inside again to Turner. Turner misses everything there. And here come the Bearcats, a chance to tie or take the lead. How about this for Cincinnati? Back they come in the lane, up with a shot, and tying this game is Marley Hill. She's a former Ohio uh, High School Co-Player of the Year. The 6'2 sophomore gets her first buckets, and we're all, all even at nine. see Tulsa really working that perimeter kind of on the give and go. All of a sudden, a turnover time now for the University of Tulsa. Remember, early on, Cincinnati had five turnovers. Now, all of a sudden, Tulsa has seven. <laughs> wow. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, has five as well. Five now. I mean, all it takes is one media timeout, and you can, <laughs> you know, you can change the way, the way your team is playing. We don't know what Coach Elliott said to her team, but she said something because they came out defensively focused, offensively trying to get some shots up, and now they're for forcing turnovers. Whatever she said, it sure worked. Bearcats 9-9, <laughs> yeah. nine, nine, the chance to take the lead right now. Whitfield, this is Can. Can drives and drops up, and she traveled. Traveling on Mackenzie Canley. Couldn't help but notice Liz, you had that automatic yeah. <laughs> uh, reaction with a travel sign over here, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, I'm part time ref. No. Uh, <laughs> Golden Hurricane, we're tied at nine here in the first half in Tulsa. Nice drive and missing the layup, and I think with Ashley Clark and Bearcats have the basketball. Anna Owens. Cannon tries to go inside and uh, whistle. Foul's going to be called again on Tulsa. Tulsa picking up turnovers and fouls all of a sudden after that uh, first media timeout, the 16-minute mark. And you see Marley Hill just posting up really, really hard. She kind of puts that hand in the air and is waiting for it, and they're trying to find her, but it just seems like Turner just got a little hand check in the back. Ref called that. Mackenzie can has a screen to work off of and hits the three-pointer. Oh, well, nice screen by Marley Hill and Can cans it there for three and all of a sudden <laughs> Cincinnati's up now three, 12-9. 
and there was a hand in her face. That wasn't an uncontested shot. I mean, she she nailed that one right with right, right with a hand in her face. And a mask on too. And a, and a mask. <laughs> I Two so, things. I think especially for a women's basketball player, there can't be much worse than having a mask on. You know, I know. Mess up your makeup and everything. My yeah. gosh, what a run by the Bearcats! Let's take a look at some of these highlights. There is Cincinnati comes back and takes a 12-9 lead as we take a break here at 12:54 to play in the first half here at Tulsa. They really made it. I mean, Tulsa jumped out to a 9-0 lead in this one, Liz. And back come the Bearcats so very quickly. And you see Cincinnati right here just working really hard, getting in the lane, finishing well. Right here, right here, you just see a lot of ball movement. And right there is Anna Owens, wide open, ready to shoot that shot. Here she is bringing it down the floor, seeing the open man hill. And she just takes one strong dribble, finishes on the right-hand side. Also right here is the one we were just talking about, Mackenzie Can just with a hand in her face, just one dribble, pulled up, nailed that shot, and Cincinnati, just like that, takes the momentum. Great set of replays there from our American Digital Network team here on hand at the University of Tulsa today. Cincinnati with a 12-9 lead. Tulsa trailing for the first time this afternoon, trying to get back in this one, and a nice drive and a layup by Kelsey Grodry with the left hand. Cuts the Bearcat lead to one. Good move by her. I saw her play early, earlier in the season, and she does a really good job of knowing when to penetrate and how to finish. And Owen drops it off inside, taken away by Tulsa. Another turnover for TU. Kelsey Groby goes inside to Turner. Turner back outside, and the three-pointer on the way. No good by Reed. Rebound comes down for the Bearcats. And Owens on the drive, drops it off now. Wide open for the jumper. Trevor, no good as uh, Brandy Tarver missed. And a travel though on Tulsa as they try to come up the court. So Cincinnati gets it back with a fresh 30 here. 12 minutes, two seconds left in this opening half. Right there, I think they just didn't communicate. They thought it was, you know, the opponent. And so they kind of both came down with the ball, took a couple, sec a couple steps and resulted in a travel. And Owens, oh, she traveled. She went to get the shot up, did a little head fake, but moved to feet as well. So that's back-to-back -back turnovers. Tulsa now trailing by one, will come down with a chance to take the lead. And offensively, when the shot goes up for Tulsa, the last couple possessions, it's just been Turner down there to rebound. Everyone has to make an effort to kind of get around the basket and get the rebound. Inside, shot up and good. Nicely done by Mariah Turner, number 32, and Tulsa's back on top, 13-12. She does a good job of not doing too much down there. She'll catch it, figure out where her opponent is, take one dribble left to right, and then finish with either hand. So she's not doing too much. She's doing really well. Mackenzie can. Back to Ann Owens. Owens, the one that makes the Cincinnati offense go. Look at this three-pointer. Wow. Way outside, just off the back rim, and Tulsa comes down with the board. Tulsa, Jordan Holmes uh, just in the game, getting that rebound. Tiana Reed gets it over to Kelsey Grovey. Grovey, whistle. Looks like an illegal screen. Yeah. We have our second media timeout here as we come to the 10.53 mark here in the first half. 13 throw. We'll take a look as Tulsa retakes the lead on uh, this play right here. Got some Tulsa replays. You have Kelsey Grovey driving really hard with that left hand. Just a nice finish over the basket. Tiana Reed finding... There you go, Tiana Reed finding Turner down there with just the one dribble to the left and spin back to the right and finish on the basket. We got a timeout here in Tulsa. We'll take a break with them on the American Digital Network. University of Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university. 
Back in live at the Reynolds Center of the University of Tulsa campus in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the Golden Hurricane lead uh, the Cincinnati Bearcats 13 to 12, 10 53 left in the first half. Chris Lincoln here along with Liz Lay. And Liz, uh, again, uh, one of the key players for the Cincinnati Bearcats helped lead there and come back here is uh, Anna, I think I'm going to call her Anna. Uh, <laughs> Anna Owens selected to the honor uh, role for the fourth straight week, most recently earning that honor December 29th. He averages 12 and a half points, seven rebounds, four steals per game during this past week. Has played uh, a part in 38.2% of Cincinnati's field goals this season, either scoring or assisting. That's that's amazing. That, freshman. That is, and that really is what you call a true freshman. I mean, she's doing a little bit of everything. She's making a name for herself. Early on in the year, she made all-tournament team at the Cal Thanksgiving Classic. I mean, those are things that freshmen usually don't do, but she's creating a name for herself, and I'm just excited to see how she's going to grow as a sophomore and, into her senior and year. And here she comes right now on Owens across the timeline, getting some pressure on her putting some pressure on defense now to crank that up. Not able to get a shot up as Mackenzie Cannon throws it away. So Tulsa has it on the replay. It's counting on your quick hands protected there, Liz. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I was ready for it. <laughs> I can see that. That's good. <laughs> Tulsa with a one-point lead. Getting it back is Tiana Reed for the Golden Hurricane. Reed takes the shot around, no good. Rebound pulled down for the Bearcats. Randy Tarver cleared the boards there, and once again, Anna Owens brings him across, and a whistle and a foul. Little arm bar, you can't, can't really get that, that hot check on the, on the player who's dribbling, Jordan Holmes. Team foul number five on Tulsa Cincinnati, by the way, with only two team fouls so far in this first half. <laughs> Offensive foul. Called against Cincinnati. Pushing off, trying to get through there. You called it. You spoke it into existence. Yeah. <laughs> Shelby Chandler was the one whistle for the foul there, and uh, goes another turnover against the Bearcats. Coming down to the 10-minute mark in the first half. It's a one-point lead for Tulsa. Ashley Clark with a drive. Rebound again comes down to Brandy Tarver. She's done a good job for the Bearcats this afternoon. On the boards for them. Inside, nice pass, give and go, and Marley Hill scores and gets Cincinnati back on top. Was a really nice pass. It looked like she passed through her defender, and just and uh, found Hill right there and just finished with that with that right hand. Groby for Tulsa, way outside. The jumper is up by Ashley Clark and hits the floor. Missed everything. It'll go back to Cincinnati. Bearcats with a 14-13 lead in this first half of this second. American Athletic Conference game of the season for Cincinnati. Mentioned uh, they uh, dropped their uh, conference opener to Tulane 60 to 50 for TU their first conference game. On Owens, no good on that shot for Anna. Rebound come down, coming down for the Golden Hurricane. Ashley Clark and a whistle. Gonna stay with TU as it knocked out of bounds. Wasn't a bad shot for Owens though. Like we said, she shoots 50% from the three point line and she didn't have a hand up. She just had a like one dribble and then step back a little bit, created some space and just pulled the trigger. She's also ninth nationally in three point field goal percentage. Mm -hmm. like you yeah. mentioned 50% is unbelievable in three mm -hmm. point range. Grovey to Webster. Reed now, ball knocked away and Owens trying to save it. And does not. It'll stay with Tulsa. A good hustle there by Anna. She anticipated that pass. She has a really good sense of knowing where the ball is and when the pass is going to be made. She tried to jump that pass and took a little gamble and couldn't quite get it before it got out of bounds, but it was a good, a good choice. Groby works in the lane and throws up with the left hand, but she traveled first. You can see that one coming. So another turnover 
for TU. So this has been a first half marked by a lot of turnovers, Liz. It has been. And when it comes to the travels, it, it's always kind of tricky because when you're doing, when you're pulling the ball over your head, you think you can take that one, two step when really you have to make sure your feet hit the ground at the same time. No pitter patters. And Tulsa, that's their eighth turnover. And Cincinnati has nine. So, I mean, it is a game of turnovers so far. Turnovers and runs. Bearcats with a one-point lead. And they throw it away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Add another one for Cincinnati. That is now double-digit turnovers the first half. That is not going to please Coach Jamal Elliott. And just another tidbit, Cincinnati's averaging about 16 turnovers a game, and their opponent's averaging about 12. But right now, it looks like they're on track to, to break that, but they don't need to break that. That's not a good thing. For sure. Groby trying to drive, throws it up, and a whistle and a foul is going to be called. And it's going to be on, uh, on Owens. Fourth team foul for the Bearcats now. I mentioned Tulsa has five. And Groby fouled in the act of shooting, so he'll get two free throw attempts here. And the first one is good. We're tied at 14, 8-13. You see left in this opening half here at the University of Tulsa. And Tulsa's back on top. So after Tulsa jumped to a 9-0 lead, Cincinnati stormed back. They took the lead. And back and forth ever since. Tulsa's showing some pressure in the backcourt here, Liz. Yeah, they are. And they're leading it with Erica Wakefield, a really good defensive uh, player for Tulsa. The incoming freshman from... Heritage Hall High School in Oklahoma City. Actually played AAU with my sister. That's just oh, random. Oh, very good. Very nice. <laughs> Under 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Cincinnati. Quisenberry in the corner. Now gets it on top. The shot by Tarver is off the rim. No good. Rebound comes down to Tulsa. New in the game is Artura Campbell, 6'2 sophomore. She got the board there. And now a jump ball is going to be called underneath. Tulsa's uh, Ashley Clark getting tied up there. We're under eight minutes, and we have our next media timeout here. 7.37 left to play in this opening half of the American Athletic Conference season opener for Tulsa as TU leads Cincinnati 15 to 14. Again, uh, just getting underway in American Athletic Conference, uh, conference play itself. And the teams have kind of established themselves early on through the season here with some non-conference action. And take a look at this point, where they stand so far, Liz. You see the conference standings right there. Tulane at 2-0 and right now. Temple also 2-0. and UConn, number two in the nation. They're 1-0 and in the conference. UCF is 1-0. and Also is USF. Tulsa, since it's their first game, we'll find out what their record will be after. East Carolina, Memphis, Cincinnati all are 0-1 right now. And Houston and SMU are 0-2 right now. Cincinnati opened with a uh, home court win over Arkansas Pine Bluff back in mid-November. Then they went on a losing streak of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, lost 8 in a row. Mm -hmm. But they had a brutal road schedule. Boy, that was yeah. so tough on them, Liz. They came back home and did some business. They beat Delaware 69-57 December 20th. On the 23rd, they whipped up on Detroit 70-38. Then on the 28th, just uh, lost that uh, home uh, conference opener 60-50 to Tulane. And look ahead for you Bearcat fans. Mark these down and get out here and support your Cincinnati team. You have some upcoming games. January 3rd versus Temple at home. And then January 7th, they're traveling to Houston. The 10th, they're going to UCF. The 14th to Memphis. And the 20th wow. to Temple. So they have four games on the road. And then they come back home January 25th and play number two UConn. So it will not be an easy schedule for them um, following this game. Cincinnati has some, <laughs> got some frequent flyer miles there, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah good. load them up. <laughs> right, please. Cincinnati trailing 15-14 as they get into Tulsa putting now real full court pressure on the back. Cincinnati, a nice job of breaking here, and back down come the Bearcats. Double teamed inside, scrambled loose on the floor. It's going to be a jump ball. Boy, Tulsa really switching clamped their defense on. They did. That was a really good trap right there. They had her kind of cornered off, one facing the sideline, one facing the, the baseline, and they were just 
keeping her right there, weren't letting her, they were not letting her see anybody to pass it out to. So that good possession. That possession arrow goes to Tulsa on the jump ball. Now the throw away by Tulsa. It was a bad pass by Groby, and here comes Cincinnati again. Grisenberry trying to force her way inside the lane. Can't go. Grisenberry guarded by Grovey. Drops it off and getting a handle on it now as Jasmine Whitfield. We have a uh, Cincinnati player down on the court. Traveling violation against Cincinnati, but one of the young ladies for Cincinnati has gotten ill on the floor here, so the officials quickly have stopped play here, and they're going to give the team a chance to come here. Here comes the training staff on the court. A little bit of a stomach virus, of course, hit so many people all around the country here. And uh, we'll have to take a break here as uh, young number 25. That's Chelsea Jamison, the uh, senior, not feeling very well right now. The clock gives her a hand, and we'll take a break here on the American Digital Network. Now the team's huddled around their coaches now as uh, we've had a stop in play as poor Jasmine uh, uh, Whitfield was taken ill there on the court and left the floor here. So uh, we got a moment to clear things up here. Did you see uh, Cincinnati leading Tulsa 15 to 13. I'm sorry, Jamison, right? Jamison was the, uh, the player who was taken ill on the floor. I hope she's okay. She's sitting at the end of the bench looking. Chelsea Jamison, a senior out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Five foot ten averages, six points a game, five and a half rebounds, one of the leading rebounders. But uh, it just took a little stomach virus mm -hmm. or something there. They've got her on the sideline there. Still working on the court, cleaning up the court. Here to see uh, Jamel Elliott, the uh, head coach of the Cincinnati Bearcats. Mentioned she's got a stellar career from Connecticut where she was a mm -hmm. national champion as a player, then a five-time national champion as an assistant coach for Gino there uh, her school. This is her sixth seed at Cincinnati. 13-18 and 18 last season, 65-99 overall. And she tries to get this Bearcats program rejuvenated and get her going there, but people got a lot of respect for her. She's done a good job recruiting, it looks like, too. Yeah, she has. And when you have somebody with such experience playing for a top team and then coaching for a top team, you know that they can take any program and, and get them there because they know what it takes. So that's it's great to have Elliott on staff at Cincinnati. Inside comes the University of Tulsa, Ashley Clark. Goes back outside to Grovey here. 15 seconds on the uh, shot clock. In the corner, Ashley Clark off the rim, no good. Rebound for Tulsa, though. Back up, no good on that try by Webster. And the rebound comes down to Cincinnati. Marley Hill over to Quisenberry. Quisenberry drops it off air for Tarver. Tarver, the drive and a whistle. Nice drive there by Tarver. She hesitated for a second, took that extra couple dribbles to get to the basket, tried to finish with the left, and... Got hit on the hand by Campbell, it looks like. So she'll be shooting two. That's, by the way, the sixth team foul on Tulsa. So that means the next whistle will bring the Bearcats a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Cincinnati just four team fouls this first half. Rattles that one in. There's uh, Brandy Tarver, 5'10 sophomore. Out of Chicago, Illinois. Her second one. Here goes the left-hander again. Swish. I tell you, one thing I really admire about women's basketball, ladies shoot great free throws. They really yeah. do. Well, not to brag, but <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's true. They really do. Outshoot the men almost every time. Driving now for Tulsa. Layup on. Misses everything there. Was Jasmine Whit or excuse me, was uh, Ashley Clark. She got too far into the basket there. Back comes Cincinnati. And the shot up, no good. And a foul charging. Kelsey Grovey there hustling back, setting her feet. Waiting for, waiting for Whitfield to just run into her. 
fell down and got that charge. It's plays like that that really matter. You know, just putting yourself in a position, your body in a position to take a charge and, and get the ball back for your team and then capitalizing on that. Those are really key plays. So good job by Kelsey Grovey there. GU now trying to uh, retake the lead down by a point here. And we're coming to the five and a half minute mark left in this opening half here at the University of Tulsa. And traveling. That was uh, Ashley Clark made a move inside, but not before she shuffled her feet. And it has been a turnover fest so far. We mentioned to you, uh, Tulsa has uh, had a bunch of turnovers, as has uh, had 12 turnovers for Cincinnati, 10 for Tulsa. And I think probably, probably 11 now, yeah. Yeah, I think probably on both sides, maybe three or four of them have been travels. Right. Like. Mackenzie can now leaves it there for Whitfield. Whitfield drives and shot won't go. Well, with the rebound was Marley Hill, but taken away by Tulsa, and the Hurricane come back the other way. Caden Brady leaves it outside, and three-pointer hit beautifully by Tiana Reed, the sophomore catcher of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. She transferred from Butler Community College to TU out of Kansas. The 5-6 sophomore gets her three. Knocked away in the lane, and Tulsa battling for it, and has a nice quick hands there by Ashley Clark, stripping the ball, and TU comes back with an 18-16 lead. Driving now is Webster, shoots to the left hand, oh, in and around and out it goes. Nice rebound comes down to Mackenzie Can. You know, Tulsa's getting the looks, they're getting the, the you know, the open, the opening in the lane and the shots around the basket, they just have to make them. Whistle inside, that's gonna be the seventh team foul called on Tulsa. Anna Owens uh, makes her return to the lineup for uh, the University of Cincinnati. She'll replace uh, Bianca Quisenberry at that guard spot. Had to give her a little break, but I'm sure she's going to come in just as rejuvenated as the beginning of the game and do some things. I'm excited to see. One on one free throws. Uh, the first one hit there by Marley Hill. She'll get a second. By the way, uh, Anna Owens is the leading scorer for, uh, once again for Cincinnati at this point. Five points for her. Marley Hill. Who's at the free throw line? Has a chance to tie her now with this free throw. She's at four right now. T led by uh, by Kelsey Grovey with nine points. 18-17. Tulsa's lead is one. Outside, Webster faked the shot. Now drives, shoots, hits. Antoinette Webster, five nine, junior from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. With the bucket, Tulsa with a lead of three. Webster really thought about that three. She pump faked, got her defender in the air, one dribble to the right, and finished. Good decision by Webster. Oh, saving it was on Owens. Inside, nice turn up and around. It will not fall for Marley Hill. And Tulsa clears the boards. Back come the Hurricane. Coming down to three and a half minutes left in this opening half. A good, tight ball game here in an American Athletic Conference play from Tulsa. Oh, driving the lane and now dropping it off. Nice give and go there. Caden Brady drops it off for Ashley Clark, who hits, and Tulsa now has a lead of five. That was just a lapse defensively also for Cincinnati, driving to the baseline and letting a defender get it to the other side. Should not happen. Good job by Marley Hill there. She muscles that shot up and in. Marley Hill ranked 34th nationally, by the way, in double-double. She has five this season. Ranks 42nd in rebounding the nation, 28th in defensive rebound. So he's a key player for these Bearcats. Driving the shot up and around. It will not fall for Ashley Clark. Tries to knock it away, but instead it's going to be called for the foul. We have a stop in play here again for the final media scheduled timeout. 2.47 left to play in this opening half. And walking you back inside the uh, University of Tulsa's Reynolds Center here on the campus here with the Tulsa. Chris Lincoln along with Liz Lay. And Liz, so far, this game has had a, really a series of runs. It has. I mean, first you have Tulsa come out of the gate, it, you know, in the beginning of the game. You have a 9-0 lead. Yeah. They're just finding ways to score. Cincinnati not really sure how to deal with that. 
right after that media timeout, you have them come out, three possessions in a row, boom, 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 and they're back into the game, tied up at nine. So, And really, it's pretty evenly matched. They both are turning the ball over, right. you know, a significant amount of times. They're, you know, traveling. But I think defensively, both teams are, are trying to figure out how to stop what's working for each team. So Tulsa's trying to figure out a way to stop Anna Owens and Marley Hill. And for Cincinnati, they're trying to stop that penetration that Grovey's creating, that Reed is also creating, and Mariah Turner down inside. So it's pretty evenly matched. And like you said, it's been a game of runs. And um, that's basically just and, how the game's been so And far. mistakes. Uh, with 22 turnovers this first half. 12 for Cincinnati, 10 for Tulsa. Uh, the Bearcats have one block shot and five steals. Tulsa has not blocked the shot, but they also have four steals to this point. Tulsa's offense, uh, off turnovers, they have half of their points, 11 of 22 to this point. Take a look at some of the uh, Golden Hurricane uh, play here today. Has some Tulsa replays. Not sure who that three was, but it was a really good open three. You have Brady right there. Right there was Antoinette Webster with the pump fake on the three-point line, the one dribble pull up on the right-hand side. Brady right there finds the open man, Ashley Clark, on the other side, and just a nice little nice little floater from the from the corner. So they, they definitely are having good chemistry so far. They just have to figure out a way to keep from turning the ball over and and get some more defensive stops. There's Captain Kane, the mascot <laughs> of the University of Tulsa. Not easy to have a Golden Hurricane as a mascot. I know. So. <laughs> I wondered how that, how that would look, and I now we it. know. <laughs> yeah, Captain Kane here at the free throw line for Cincinnati. Jasmine Whitfield hits the first of uh, her two two shot opportunity here. And a chance to bring Cincinnati back within a point. Whitfield hits it, and Cincinnati remains perfect on their free throws uh, today. They're four for four. Inside for Tulsa, Groby turns, hits again. She's their point leader now, double figures with 11 points for Kelsey Groby, the junior from Shawnee, Oklahoma. Two-year starter, she's had 43 uh, double figures game, now making 44 in her career. And she's also on track for the 1,000-point club. She, at the beginning oh, of this oh. game, was at 781. Oh, took that away from Anna. On Owens with a drive, beautiful layup with the right hand there, Liz, but she used her left to kind of get position, and they whistled her for it, so that is the 16th on the Bearcats, so Tulsa will be in one and one the next time they whistle Cincinnati. Coming down to the two-minute mark in this first half. Want to stay tuned for our American Athletic Conference halftime update. Jordan Holmes drives the baseline for Tulsa up around and it won't go, but a foul is going to be called. It's a good move. Tulsa really, there. most possessions, they're moving the ball really well. They're making sure that offensively no one's really stagnant. They're trying to set on balls up top and, and uh, their five players working really well. So they're getting to the basket a good amount of times. They just have to finish them and if not, then get to the line like Holmes did. Jordan Holmes uh, is going to get two free throws, fouled in the act of shooting, misses her first one. Tulsa before that was also uh, perfect with just their two free throw opportunities. They were two for two. It's their first miss of today. And Jordan Holmes, the freshman from Austin, Texas, converts on that free throw. And Tulsa's lead is four with the two minutes to play in the opening half. Grisenberry guarded out top by Tiana Reed for Tulsa. Inside it goes to Marley Hill and Marley Hill, the 6'2 sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. She does a good job of not really putting the ball on the floor. She'll just kind of catch it and see how she can score from there. Oh, running layout nicely done for Tiana by Caden Brady, the senior out of Hilt Hilton, uh, Oklahoma. Beautiful move. Looked like she was kind of floating out of bounds and just flipped it back towards the basket. So, beautiful move by Brady there. Quisenberry faked the shot. Around it comes now to Tarver. Tarver. Whistle and cut. Traveling again. Yeah. Boy, how many of those have we had this half, Liz? My God. I would like to know, but I'm going to wow. take a guess and say five. I wouldn't. At least. At least. I think you're right. Yeah. Is a. Uh, Tulsa coming back now to the basketball as they come down to the one-minute mark left in the opening half. 
Hurricane leading by four. Gianna Reed with a drive and it won't go, but she's fouled. Looks like she actually oh, gave the foul. charge, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, right, charging. Against Tulsa, their ninth team foul. Cincinnati trying to cut into this Tulsa lead here in the final uh, 45 seconds of play in the first half. Inside, knocked away nicely there by Jordan Holmes for Tulsa. Back come the Golden Hurricane there on the drive and up with it. No good, gonna be knocked out of bounds. Driving there, trying for the uh, layup was Caden Brady. Nice defensive play for the Bearcats here. Good block by Tarver. Yep, I was Randy kind of Tarver. expecting her to try to run through and, and knock it out that way, but she has such a wingspan that she just kind of reached over and knocked it out of her hand, so good block by her. Three on the way by Jordan Holmes is no good. Cincinnati now with uh, 29 seconds left to play in the first half. Only about a second difference from that in the shot clock. The Bearcats, you think, will be playing for this final shot here of the half, trying to cut into Tulsa's four-point lead. Knocked away. Tulsa has the steal. Ten seconds left. Back come the Golden Hurricane with Grovey. Grovey drives the lane, lays up with the left hand, and in. With six seconds left. Boy, that's a big turnover against the Bearcats there. Giving Quinn Tulsa up by six. And now launching a long shot there at the end of the half was Brandy Tarver. And we hit cap time with the University of Tulsa. Leading the visiting Cincinnati Bearcats 29 to 23. Again, it was a first half with a lot of turnovers, a lot of mistakes, and you mentioned a, a lot of runs back and forth here. There's again our key players that uh, performed like we thought they would. Uh, Anna Owens, for a freshman, is really special. She really is. You you see a lot of effort from her, you know, even when she comes out of the game, she has fresh legs as soon as she comes back in. She's demanding that her players kind of run the offense. You see her pointing, saying, go here, run this. Uh, she's finding the open man. She's found Marley Hill a couple times, and she's knocking down the three-point shot. So she's really doing a lot for, for her team this first half. We got a good one going here at halftime at the University of Tulsa with TU uh, on top here, 29 to 23 as we take the break. And we're going to send you back to the American Athletic Conference and their digital halftime show for you. Thanks for tuning into the game here on the American Digital Network. I'm Haley Outen. We've reached the end of the non-conference schedule and begun conference play. But let's take a look back at how things have been going so far. The defending national champs, UConn, are off to a good start. They suffered an early loss on the road at Stanford, their first loss since 2013, but then picked up a big win on the road at Notre Dame. After losing their number one ranking, the Huskies have marched back up the polls. The Huskies were a heavy preseason favorite in the American media poll and will look for their second straight conference title. Head coach Gino Ariema has 20 regular season and 19 conference tournament titles. A less familiar team turning heads is new American conference member East Carolina. The Pirates are third and fifth in the NCAA in block shots and steals. They're averaging about seven block shots and 14 steals per game. Junior guard Jada Payne has made her mark, scoring nearly 20 points per game and taking home American Player of the Week honors on December 15th. There are also individual players making a national impact. Three American women's basketball players in the top 10 rank in the NCAA in three-point field goal percentage. UConn's Kalina Mosqueda Lewis leads the way with a number two ranking at about 60%, while freshman Anna Owens from Cincinnati averages about 55% good for fifth in the nation, while ECU's Jada Payne is seventh overall. Tulane is off to a hot start in their first year in the conference. The Green Wave won eight of their first nine games, including a big upset over in-state rival LSU. Senior guard Danielle Blagg hit the 1,000-point milestone, while freshman Colby Morgan has provided a scoring punch. The first-year guard has already taken home conference Freshman of the Week honors three times. 
The Green Wave will be looking for its fifth straight postseason trip this year, something they've done 15 of head coach Lisa Stockton's 20 years guiding the program. Coming up, we'll take an even closer look at Tulane as well as fellow conference newcomers, Tulsa and East Carolina, all in their first year in the American. As the American tips off their second basketball season, the conference welcomes three new members, East Carolina, Tulane, and Tulsa. Back at Media Day, we had a chance to talk to a few of the players and coaches and find out what we need to know about each of these programs. Yeah, we're looking forward to the opportunity that's ahead of us. What, what I think we've seen is really it's like two years in a row being in a different league. Conference USA was very, very different a year ago. Uh, and then obviously a lot of familiarity, but things have changed. Uh, new coaches, uh, players to graduation, but we're looking forward to the challenge. You know, we think this is a beginning of a new era for us, and we really believe this is a, a tremendous move for Tulane, uh, a great basketball conference. I mean, obviously you've got two national champions in men and women's basketball, but um, I, I can tell such a difference with our team is just far as um, just their motivation. Over the summer, we really talked about trying to elevate our play, and, and I think it's going to really help us. Going into this year, um, I think our players felt this, a more sense of we could have been more successful had it been more about the team and less about individuals. And so they've really bought into that. And they've taken ownership of that. And we can already see a difference in practice. That it's such a better chemistry already than it was this time last year. We did not have really good team chemistry. And that was the root of a lot of our problems and issues that we had last year. So we felt if we could fix that, that will hopefully help translate to season. You know, we'll, we'll, we will see because season is coming, coming pretty close. So we really wanted to focus on our team and not necessarily what you want to do as an individual or which will help build a team. But ultimately, if, you, if you're doing it for the betterment of the team, then it will extend to on the court because ultimately we're out here to play games and win games. I think we play team basketball. I think on any given night, any of us can be the leading scorer, but I think our defense is what's going to pull us through this season. I think if it comes to anything, if there's a bad night, that we can definitely lean on our defense to get us through the game. Um, we've got an experienced senior class. We've got four players that have played a lot in the senior class, but we've got a, a very well-balanced team. And I think one of our strengths is that you know we've got different players that can step up different nights and score. So it's not one superstar to stop. We've just got a really nice balanced attack. Every time we step on the floor, we're going to go out and compete. And I think that's the, the best compliment I can receive as a coach. If somebody watches a game or watches a practice, the thing they take away from that game or practice is, wow, that team really played hard that we are undaunted, we're relentless, um, we won't give up, and I think that's one of the main things that people need to know about us. You'll see a lot of these three teams on the American Digital Network this year. The teams play a combined 14 times on our 2014-15 women's basketball package. Next up, we'll tell you a little bit more about what kind of coverage the American Digital Network will be giving the women's basketball teams from around the league. Thanks again for tuning in to today's game, and we have a lot more planned for the rest of the season. The American Athletic Conference has made a significant commitment to women's basketball. For the second straight season, we'll produce and distribute 30 women's games. With the significant exposure the league's teams already enjoy on the ESPN family of networks, more than half of league contests will be available on a national platform. We'll have two to four games a week from now until March 2nd, all fully produced and called by a great group of professionals. And we'll be here at halftime to tell you about all the great stories happening in the American. 
UConn has its own television agreement with SNY, but you can see all the Huskies' regular season games on ESPN3 if you're out of the area. Here at the ADN, we'll have the rest of the league covered. We'll be visiting each campus and see the other 10 teams repeatedly throughout the season. All live games will be available completely free of charge and on all mobile, tablet, and desktop devices. Visit theamerican.org slash DN for a complete schedule. The page has been designed to display on whatever device you visited at. And we have a new way to watch this year on your Roku device. The official Roku channel of the American Digital Network will feature on-demand video and all live events. Visit Roku.com to download the channel to your device. Please tell your friends and family that follow women's basketball games to check us out and join the conversation on Twitter at American underscore WBB. It's going to be an exciting regular season leading up to our 2015 Women's Basketball Championship at Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. Tickets are on sale for that event already and will be there to bring you behind the scenes coverage. The second half is just moments away. For the American Digital Network, I'm Haley Outen. What do we mean by Cincinnati Smart? It's the power of first-hand experience. It's learning with the best minds and in the best organizations. Cincinnati Smart is impressing your professor and your boss in the same week. It's smart on a whole different level. Cincinnati Smart, it's who you become, it's your competitive edge, and you can only get it at the University of Cincinnati. Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university. Welcome back to the Rental Center here at the University of Tulsa in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're at the half. It was a Tulsa leading of the University of Cincinnati, 29 to 23. Chris Lincoln here again with Liz Lay. Liz, let's kind of recap some of the action here in the first half. It was a, it said runs. Tulsa jumped out nine nothing. Back in the Bearcats, they took a lead. That is back and forth pretty much the rest of the first half. It really has been back and forth. Like you said, Tulsa jumped out on it real fast. They knew what they were going to do. They they pushed the ball up the floor. Tiana Reed was leading them, pushing the ball up the floor every possession. It's kind of slowed down a little bit, and they've kind of settled back into their offense a little bit. But then Cincinnati came alive, and, and three possessions in a row, I think, scored and then tied it up at nine. So it has been a game of runs. The, the major focus and yeah. thing that we've noticed actually has been turnovers. Right. You know, it's amazing, Liz. Uh, we had an uh, unofficial count. The official halftime box score we just received, mm -hmm. 20 turnovers for the University of Cincinnati in the first half, 12 for Tulsa. That 32 is, turnovers yeah. in a half. That's, that's wow. a lot of turnovers. I'm sure they're getting there. They're getting chewed <laughs> out. <laughs> Taking some of the early action, though, as uh, Cincinnati mentioned, trailed early 9-0, then got back into this game. Nice shot up and in there by number 13, Brandy Tarver. And then you see right there, Anna Owens just knocks down that three with a hand in her face. Right here's another one where Can just takes one dribble, steps back, pulls that shot also with a hand and a face mask on, makes that shot. They're feeding Marley Hill. She takes one dribble, goes over the defendant, finishes with the right hand. Now you have Tulsa's. Katie Brady trying to come down the right-hand side, and you have Tarver there to block her. Such long arms. Have some Tulsa replays for you. There's Kelsey Grovey just knocking down that wide-open three early on in the first half. There you have Braden driving and finishing, floating out of bounds, still finishing with the right hand. You have Tiana Reed right there finding the inside Turner right there, finishing with the left hand. And then here you have Cincinnati trying to get the ball, and then they just Tulsa drives and steals that ball down there. Also, you have Groby right here with a nice switch over left-hand finish. And that's how that first half ended. I'm sure you know that uh, Jamel Elliott, the uh, Cincinnati coach, was not happy with that turnover right at the end of the first half. 20 turnovers for Cincinnati in the half. They trailed the University of Tulsa 29-23 at halftime. We'll give you the individual scoring leaders when we come back after this break. Before we come back for second half action on the American Digital Network. What do we mean by Cincinnati Smart? It's the power of first-hand experience. It's learning with the best minds and in the best organizations. Cincinnati Smart is impressing your professor 
and your boss in the same week. It's smart on a whole different level. Cincinnati Smart. It's who you become. It's your competitive edge. And you can only get it at the University of Cincinnati. Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university. live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the Reynolds Center, home of the University of Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And they lead the University of Cincinnati 29-23, the very first game ever for the TU women in the American Athletic Conference. And for the Cincinnati Bearcats, uh, their second conference game of the season, their 0-1-1 after dropping their season opener uh, and their conference game to Tulane. And Tulsa, of course, uh, meeting Cincinnati for the very first time in basketball. Now, first half, some of the leaders, not surprising, kind of the stars we talked about. Yeah, we have Anna Owens right there with five points and uh, Marley Hill with nine points and six rebounds. And she's doing a lot. She averages a double-double. And then you have Kelsey Groby for Tulsa with 13 points and one rebound. She's actually shooting perfectly. She's five for five right wow. now from the floor and two for two from the free throw line. So I would say that of everyone on the floor, she's having a perfect game. You know, it, it was all about turnovers for Cincinnati. They just killed them, Liz, because mm -hmm. they actually outshot Tulsa 46% to 40%. They hit 7 of 15. Tulsa hit 12 of 30. They uh, had 40%, 2 of 5 from the three-point line. Uh, Tulsa 2 of 6. And uh, free throws, they hit 87%, 7 of 8. Tulsa 3 of 4, 75%. So really, the, the key figure, those turnovers, uh, 20, 20 against yeah. Cincinnati in the first half. And Tulsa off those turnovers, 17 of their 29 points came off the Bearcats' mistakes. I mean, you just have to take care of the ball. 20, a turnover here and there is expected, you know, but 20 turnovers in one half, that I'm sure for Jamel Elliott, that is just completely unacceptable. And you can't score if you don't have the ball. So you have to take care of it. Cincinnati will start to the possession here to, to begin the second half. And Anna Owens will get them underway here. Owens to Tarver, back to Owens it goes now. Anna Mimetra, one of the nation's best three-point shooters in women's college basketball. Quisenberry into the lane, drops, loses the basketball on the floor. It's still loose, picked up by Anna Owens with five seconds to shoot. Owens drives, now drops it off and taking the shot, no good. But Marley Hill, boy, Anna should have finished that one on Owens, looked like. Really good find by Owens, though. She does that well. She finds the players. Well, T Tulsa had a turnover and then got it right back. So a couple more turnovers here. Ashley Clark for the Golden Hurricane. She is on the drive and misses the uh, layup. Rebound comes down to the Bearcats. Uh, Jasmine Whitfield. Owens, nice lead pass up for Marley Hill. Marley must the way in, but no traveling is called. Yeah. Turnover again against Cincinnati. She wow. just dragged that foot, yeah. that right foot. She took one trap, one power dribble and moved forward with her left foot and then just dragged that right foot right behind her. You have to keep those feet steady and on the ground. Both teams <laughs> with the traveling need to a, need a focus on jump stopping. Inside it goes to Tulsa up for the left hand and layup is in by Mariah Turner. And Tulsa puts a lead to 31 to 23. Nice move by Turner there. I really like her inside game, especially when she focuses on the basket. She takes that one dribble and it's just easy for her to finish. Cincinnati with the drive there is Quisenberry, and she's fouled. 
men's basketball in the American Athletic Conference on this final day of 2014. University of Tulsa had a big lead and had to hold on to beat Central Florida at Central Florida today, 56-54. Tulane beat East Carolina, 67-59. And in overtime, Connecticut mm. losing at home, 57-53 in the men's game in overtime at Connecticut. Also, Memphis beating Houston, 73-54. That's on the men's side of American Athletic Conference play on this December 31st. Quisenberry gets the two free throws. Tulsa's lead is back to six. And a little pressure in the backcourt now for Cincinnati. Yeah, they're really trying to turn it up defensively. They're trying to make up for some of those first half turnovers and force some of their own. Over the head of Globy, but uh, saving it for Tulsa was Ashley Clark as Tulsa maintains possession. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock as Reed drops it off of Globy. Now it's a whistle. And it's going to be a foul against Tulsa, I believe, or no? Let's see. Yeah, it is yeah, Tulsa. I thought so. Tiana Tulsa. Reed just drove in to the Bearcat defender there and charged against Tulsa, so it'll be Bearcats basketball. Now this would be the time for them to capitalize yeah. on, on turnovers that Tulsa makes. You have to come out and score when, when you get the ball. Hard to get, get the concept, Liz, as the shot is up and no good there by Quisenberry. But comebacks don't start on offense, they shot on defense. Got to make those stops first. Yeah. Nice play inside. Nice lead pass from Groby into Mariah Turner. And Turner, number 32, up and in with the basket. Tulsa now 33 25. Lead is eight. Drive and no good by Owens. And a foul is going to be called on Tulsa. Blocking foul. So Anna will get a chance to go to the free throw line. 75% free throw shooter. That was a really a really good call. You you kind of saw her. You kind of saw uh, Webster there falling a little bit before contact, and it's, sometimes it's really hard to pick that up. But they they ended up picking it up, and it ended up being a blocking foul. So uh, Anna now perfect in the free throw line this afternoon. She's a three of three so far with six points on the game. Again, the Bearcats just putting a little token pressure on the backcourt against Tulsa at this point. That was right into the wow. hands of Owen. I mean, like wow. right into the hands. And Owen makes him pay for it. It's a two. They're going to call it a two. On Owens now. And she gets close to double figures with nine. Driving for Tulsa. Clark with a nice layup up and in it goes. Nicely done by the junior Ashley Clark from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Right back on the Bearcats. That lead pass is knocked out of bounds, intended inside there for Quisenberry. It'll stay with the Bearcats. Trying to find somebody to get it into now. And Finally just bounces it off a Tulsa player. There was Brandy uh, Tarver. Not a bad play when you trap like that. Tulsa really is playing pretty good defense. I mean, they're denying the pass. They're not making it easy for Cincinnati at all. Wide open three-pointer. No good by Quisenberry. The rebound comes out. Now stolen away. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was uh, Antoinette Webster put it right in the hands of the Bearcats, and uh, they made him pay for it with two. Wow. And that was kind of... Just a couple possessions ago when, when Tulsa threw it right into the hands of <laughs> Owens, and now they're just throwing it to each other. Turner from the post gets it back outside. Making a spin move inside. Couldn't convert, though, with Wakefield. Five seconds left to shoot. Roby has knocked away. Now three seconds, two. She hits a while. He throws it up there. No good. Bounces off the rim. Pulled down by Marley Hills. Had a good rebounding day. Back comes on Owens. Owens flips it to the corner. Now driving the baseline. Uh, foul called though before Quisenberry can get an attempt up. And that's exactly what Owens did. She flipped it to the corner. She kind of like flew it over her head to the <laughs> to the opposite player. Very unselfish yeah, player. Yeah, very. She is, yes. Right? Oh, she had the lane to herself there, but you mm -hmm. look to the outside. Inside it comes, and there again is Marley Hill. Well, that play's been really good for them inside. I mean, and what a mismatch down there. You oh. have Wakefield versus Hill. That's probably about a foot difference. Yes. Ooh. 
Nope, won't fall for uh, Mariah Turner. Rebound for Cincinnati. Back comes on Owens. Owens drives, kicks it off the right side there to Quisenberry. Quisenberry through the lane. She'll take the short jumper at, off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound for Tulsa's Ashley Clark. Now it's knocked away from her by Quisenberry, and now it comes back to Tulsa, and the foul is going to be called, I believe. Let's see. On Tulsa, it looks like. Wow. <laughs> and that was just a really good hustle play there yeah. by Quisenberry. She did not give up. She missed the shot, went for the rebound, floated it towards half court, dough court. I mean, good play by her. And you don't even notice Cincinnati's coach, Jamal Elliott, came rushing out of the court. Yeah. He grabbed her team for that hustle there. Like the way they're going. We'll look at some of the uh, action early in this second half now with Tulsa leading just by 2, 35-33. The Golden Hurricane on offense here. Got some replays for you there. You see Clark per passing down to Mariah Turner, finish, finishing nice around the basket. Also, again, Kelsey Groby finding Turner again, and she finishes with the left hand. She does a good job of doing that. And right there, splitting two defenders is Ashley Clark. For Cincinnati, you have a, a couple replays right there. Just an easy steal there for Whitfield. I mean, she just ran right in the middle of that pass. You see Owens. Right there with the pull up, with the step back pull up jumper, really beautiful shot. And then right here, not really sure what to do, passes it in right there to Hill and a nice finish for them. So there's some good things that are happening on each team. 15.35 left in this one, and it is anybody's contest at this point. 35-33, uh, Tulsa holding on to a two point lead here. The uh, halftime advantage was Tulsa 29-23. And like we said at the beginning, we said it was going to be a pretty evenly matched game. And, and that's what it is right now. Only a four-point lead for Tulsa. You know, they're, they're kind of playing very similar as far as, you know, turnovers and tempo. It's just, it's a pretty good game. It's, and I think it's going to come down to, to who wants it more and who's going to take care of the ball. That's the key right here. <laughs> and not travel and, and, and capitalize on, on possessions. 22 turnovers for Cincinnati, 17 now for Tulsa in the updated stats. Here's some upcoming games coming on your American Digital Network. Uh, uh, January 3rd, Dallas, Texas. Uh, SME will be hosting Houston. We'll be back here and looking forward to working with you again, Liz, on January 10th as the Memphis Tigers come to Tulsa for a 2 o'clock game. Excited for that one. And then January 14th, East Carolina also comes here to Tulsa. January 17th, SMU is going to travel down to New Orleans and play Tulane. And just some good games on, on the network. So keep in touch there. We'll get these action to you here. Is now back to play Cincinnati with the basketball. Looking inside for Hill. Hill, baseline. Back out it comes to Tarver. Eight seconds. Quisenberry, the left hand around and won't go. And rebound comes down for Tulsa's Mariah Turner. Cincinnati missed a great chance there to tie and make him pay for it. Is on Owens. That's a two. Anna, excuse me, with uh, Kelsey Grovey gives a two. Is on Owens comes back now. And she's just playing so well. I mean, she still only missed one shot for the whole game. Wow. Kelsey Grovey. Grovey with the basketball right now. Leading scorer with 13 points in this game. Actually, 15 to update that. 15 for Grovey now. Pass comes inside, Turner back out and not being able to hold on to it is Caden Brady. Another turnover against Tulsa. I mean, it has been really hard for both teams to just take care of the basketball. And it's <laughs> not, I don't want to, I don't think it's much of like forced turnovers. Like the defense is just amazing on both sides. I, I think it's, some of them are just kind of careless, you know, travels and off the foot bounces and, and stuff like that. Whitfield underneath, and she lays it up and in from the right side. And Tulsa again with just a two-point lead, 37-35 here, coming to the 14-minute mark in the second half. Nice drive again by Grovey. She missed this one, but she's fouled. So Kelsey Grovey will go to the free-throw line to shoot two, leading score in this contest. In fact, the only, uh, only Tulsa player in double figures with 15, leading the way for the Bearcats. Also, their only player in double figures is Marley Hill with 11. Although Anna Owens is right there with nine. And she's only missed two shots in the game, and, and she got a foul on this one. So I was going to say it's not <laughs> like she missed it, but then she did miss it. So, <laughs> so that whole thing just failed. Yes, but <laughs> the announcer jinx got her again. <laughs> right. I waited for it. <laughs> 
Kelsey Govey gives Tulsa a three-point lead. Pressure in backcourt from uh, Tulsa's Erica Wakefield, but now Cincinnati comes across as a long shot outside there by Mackenzie Can, the six-foot freshman of Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Ties us at 38. And she was completely ready to shoot that shot. She knew that's what she was going to do as soon as she caught it. Grovey gets fouled as she was driving the baseline there. It's a foul whistled on Jasmine Whitfield. By the way, in the second half, Tulsa with five team fouls, uh, Cincinnati with two. So Kelsey Grover with 16 points on the game, trying to break this tie. Hits every side of the rim and won't go down for her. Kelsey Grover, two-year start at the University of Tulsa out of Shawnee, Oklahoma. Averaging 8.6 points a game, 2.2 rebounds. She's an 82% free throw mm -hmm. shooter. Left hand puts this one in, 17 for Groby. And Tulsa takes the one-point lead. And full court pressure now from TU in the backcourt. Harassing McKenzie can knocked away. It'll stay with Cincinnati. Good defense there by, by Tulsa. Trapping the inbound pass. On Owens, gets it in to Whitfield. Back to Owens, and now the Bearcats come across the timeline with uh, McKenzie can. Owens sets the offense for Cincinnati. Passes inside to uh, Whitfield. Now with a jumper outside and hitting it is McKenzie Can. That is another three-pointer. She's been deadly from the yes. three-point line. I mean, that is what she does. You do not want to leave her open. She just came off a screen, barely set her feet, and made that shot. So I think it'd be smart of them to feed her. Caden Brady misses on the uh, layup. Cincinnati has the basketball. And back come the Bearcats. Brandy Tarver is going to give it up to Owens. Knocked away from her, but she picks it up, drives across, and backhand up over her head. Wouldn't quite fall for it. Nice looking shot there. She gave it a try. The reverse layup didn't fall. And Tulsa back the other way. Brady feeds it inside. And missing everything was Mariah Turner on that close shot. Wild action, not much scoring. But Cincinnati now 41-39, make it 43-39. As Anna Owens, a nice layup there. She goes to double figures now with 11. Beautiful finish. It just looked effortless. She just finger rolled it with her right hand on the left hand side. Beautiful finish. Well, we'll have a break in the action right now with Cincinnati. He's come back to take the lead 43 to 39. And uh, earlier, Liz had a chance to spend a little time with the head coach of the Bearcats, uh, Jim L. Elliott. I'm here with Cincinnati head coach Jamel Elliott. Coach, this is the first time that Cincinnati is meeting with Tulsa. How are you feeling? Well, I feel good. You know, it's our first road win of, in conference play. Uh, we got in last night, had a good workout here on their home court. Um, we're eager to play. We're excited. You know, we're coming off a tough loss, a loss against Tulane on our home court. Um, so we're ready to get back out here and prove that we can uh, play tough basketball. Now, you have a duo in sophomore Marley Hill and freshman Anna Owens. How important is their role in the team's success? Because they've had a great season so far together. Well, you know, Anna is our freshman point guard. You know, she our team goes as she goes. Goes. You know, she's really embraced the role of being a freshman and playing a lot of minutes in this uh, on this team. And uh, Marley Hill is our biggest post presence that we have inside. You know, up until last game, she's been close to averaging a double double. So we need to get back her back to getting some good touches inside. Her being physical, rebounding the ball. Um, but they go. I mean, our team go as they go. And one is a point guard, one is a post. So we're definitely going to try to get honest some touches on offense as well as getting Marley some touches inside. Well, we are excited to see that duo in action. Good luck and thank you for your time. I'm Liz. Lay, and this is the American Digital Network. All right, Liz, and we'll uh, nice talk there with our head basketball coach, Cincinnati. We'll look at some of the earlier action here as uh, Cincinnati is uh, taking the lead now, and they've really become aggressive here in this second half. Right, you see Whitfield right there with a the strong finish on the right-hand side. Also just waiting, and I want to point out, Ken barely set her feet. 
and still made that shot. Here's Anna, o Anna Owens, excuse me, <laughs> with a nice hesitation in the finish with the right hand. I mean, so the, the, they all, obviously you're doing some good things, especially Can coming off the bench and knocking down some threes. And she is three for four of the three-point uh, line with nine points. All of her points have been three-pointers so far in this game this afternoon. Tulsa now with Jordan Holmes driving the lane, shoots and hits. And cuts Cincinnati's four-point lead back to two. It's a really good finish. There was a little contact there. Two players went down, and, and she still was able to finish at the basket. So good job for her. Whitfield has the pass stolen away. And driving all the way and playing it up and in is Kelsey Groby. She now, got, now goes to 19 points on the afternoon for two, leading score for Tulsa and the game. And she does such a good job of knowing where the ball is. I mean, she just jumped that pass. Like, she knew it was coming. She went, took a gamble, ended up getting it and finishing. So she's playing exceptionally well today. Marley Hill up with the left hand. It won't fall. Rebound comes down to Tulsa's Jordan Holmes. And back come the Golden Hurricane. There's a wide open three for Groby, and she nails it. She goes to 22 on the afternoon. She definitely is in her zone. I mean, she's making everything look quite effortless, and she's but, but she's playing hard. Like that three, she just floated that right up there like it was easy. But then you see her driving incredibly hard to the basket. So she's doing a little bit of everything. Kelsey Groby averages 8.6 so far this season, and now this one has 22 points. Knocked away, we have another media timeout here. We'll keep it right here and have a chance to catch up with the head basketball coach of the University of Tulsa. Talk earlier with Liz. I'm here with head Tulsa women's coach, Matilda Mossman. Coach, it is opening day for conference play. How are you feeling? Well, I think the big thing about it is it's kind of a historic event. It's our first year in the American Conference. It's our first game, first home game. And as I've told our team, Th th there's going to be a story about this game and this date and this uh, the score will be repeated many many times and we've got to write a, a really good story for this game. Well we're excited to be a part of the story now Ashley Clark she's leading your team in rebounding and scoring how big is her role in the success of your team for conference play? Well she's somebody that we've depended on for a couple years she started almost every game since her freshman year she's on track to be a 1,000 point scorer here and we've only had eight of those in the, in the history of our program so She's a pretty special and unique individual in that uh, she's a slasher. She can also shoot the outside shot. She really goes hard to the offensive boards. And we've had to play her out of position this year because of, a, of an absence of a true four player. Ashley's had to play a lot of four position. Well, we are excited to see how she does today. And good luck. And thank you for your time. Right, thank you. I'm Liz Lay, and this is the American Digital Network. And Matilda Mossman in her fourth season at the University of Tulsa with an overall 47-54 record. But in 20 years as a head coach, she has won by the 66% of her games. Amazingly, uh, I find this amazing that at 24 years old, uh, Liz, she was named the head basketball coach at the University of Arkansas. She had three straight 20 win seasons there. Then went on to five seasons at Kansas State, and won a Big 8 championship in 87. But she was named the Big 8 Women's Basketball Coach of the Year and came on to Tulsa after that. So, much like uh, Jamel Elliott for uh, Cincinnati, both these coaches with some great resumes. Yeah, and and I know her um, actually from my younger high school days, and even when I knew her in high school, I mean, she was just an incredible coach, always giving great basketball knowledge out to, you know, to people that I knew. So she does have a lot of experience. Count is on, and since that just gets it in before that five count goes off on him. On Owens gets a screen from Tarver, goes around it, now his foot to the right hand on the run, and it won't quite fall for him. Reed setting things up for Tulsa outside now. Tulsa with a three point lead. Oh, Groby thought about it, now pulls it down inside the lane, pass inside, and nice up and in. Good job, nice lead pass from Groby there. And a nice finish there for TU by Mariah Turner. And she'll go to the free throw line. Fouled the after shooting. She'll get one here. Really good find by Grovey. Her player actually fell down. So with one dribble, she had the open, the open little jumper right there. But she found Turner for a better opportunity and finished with the and one. So good play there by Tulsa. Turner out in the double figures with 10. Make it 11. <coughs> Tulsa with a six-point lead. Under 11 minutes to play in this one from the Reynolds Center on the campus of the University of Tulsa. Five seconds. 
Amy Owens not uh, Anna Owens not able to get it in in time, and so it'll, now they're. We have a timeout call first. Yep, she got the timeout before the turnover. Mm -hmm. So good job of Jamel Elliott. She called the timeout before they lost to the five seconds here. I'll take you a little bit inside the game here now, if we could, for a moment here on the American Digital Network. Earlier before the game, we had a chance to get a little bit of the strategy from TU head coach Matilda Mossman at the whiteboard. This is a set that we like to run quite a bit. It's proven pretty effective for the players on our team. Uh, the one starting out with the ball, five is going to come up and set a high on-ball screen. We're going to come off of that screen looking to get to the basket. Uh, the five is going to roll off of that. We may have the five uh, rolling. We may have a kick to the three. And then the four is going to shoot up back up to the high post. So now we have our four guy here. We have our one guy with the ball still. Uh, our five rolled. Uh, two and the three are still on the wings. So now we're going to reverse the ball. Uh, four is going to reverse it over to the wing. The one is going to screen away for the three. Four is going to set a second screen away. And now we have our three guy coming up to the top for a pass back from the two. I guess you understood that, right, Liz? Yeah, I got it. You know, I could probably run it right now. <laughs> A lot of strategy in the women's game here. Well done by Matilda Boston. Thank you, Coach, for letting us in the locker room pregame. Quisenberry guarded closely by Tulsa's Jordan Holmes there. Now again, Anna Owens steps back. She's going to take the three too far. Rebound comes down, though, to Quisenberry and a whistle underneath. Looks like Quisenberry yep. was out of bounds and tried to... Another turnover. Mm -hmm. That makes 24. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so starting for Tulsa is Caden Brady working in the backcourt with Tiana Reed. Golden Hurricane also have on the floor number one Jordan Holmes, double zero uh, Kelsey Govey, and uh, inside the big presence Maria, Maria, Maria Turner, 32. Oh, nice give and go there and a layup for Tiana Reed, the Golden Hurricane. The lane was just wide open right there. I don't know who was supposed to be on help side for Cincinnati. I'm assuming it was Hill, but she was not there, and uh, Reed got the easy finish. Tulsa extends their lead now to eight. I don't think either team though has had a double-digit lead. Tulsa was out nine nothing right early on in the start of the game. Yeah, I think they're they're probably going to pull away here pretty soon if Cincinnati. Uh, Keeps up with these turnovers, and there is one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rocking foul on Cincinnati. Turnover again. Goes back to Tulsa. And now I think uh, Joel Elliott wants to get her team more involved. Mm -hmm. She's got him in the front court here, ready to play some defense. I mean, whatever you can do to get your team, you know, involved and get some stops, you got to do it. Jordan Holmes and Brian Turner turned away at the baseline. Gets it outside to Reed. Now Kelsey Groby leading score in the game at 22. Double zero pass away. Now it's a whistle. And a foul underneath on uh, Cincinnati. Foul on the Bearcats is going to give Tulsa a chance to inbound it. Both teams now with five team fouls. It's calling Ashley Nickens. Tulsa with a fresh 30-second clock here. Under nine and a half minutes to play. Golden Hurricane trying to get a double-digit lead. Playing at home against Cincinnati. Their very first American Athletic Conference game in the school's history. Nice play in around. It won't fall, though, for Mariah Turner. And now Mariah frustrating foul yep. there. I was just going to say it was a very one of those frustrated fouls where you know you should have made the shot, <laughs> but since you didn't, yeah. you just want to get the ball back. You know, You don't really mean to foul, but you just want the ball back. So she went over her back a little bit. First meeting ever between the University of Tulsa and the University of Cincinnati. You know, the campus at TU. On Owens, she's the one to get it back in this game in a hurry, and she does with another three. Very long wow. three. She was about two and a half feet outside the three-point line right then. And there was a hand in her face, so I think she's starting to kind of warm up. 14 points now for their leading score in the season. On Owens, the freshman, true freshman. Reed for Tulsa on top again as they reset the offense with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Grovey has seven seconds, tries to pass it inside, is knocked away by Ashley Nickens, but she's going to be whistled for a foul. She made contact. 
Both teams now with 16 fouls will be shooting free throws on the next whistles for either team. And it's always hard because when you get down to those last five seconds of a defensive possession, you know the clock is getting there. You could very well get a shot clock violation call. You never want to foul right there. You just want to play the best straight-up defense you can. And I don't think she meant to foul, but it's always just hard because then they get a new clock. Wow. Kelsey Govey again with a long-range shot, and uh, she now has 24 points on the afternoon, leading all scores, and Tulsa goes back up 53-46. And that actually ties uh, Grovey's career high. She had 24 versus um, Florida Atlantic early on in her career. Grisenberry trying to make a move in there, and there's a, another turnover, or set, excuse me, a foul on uh, Cincinnati. And that's the seventh team foul on the Bearcats. That means Tulsa gets a chance at a one-on-one -on -one free throws here down the other side. That's uh, Jordan Holmes at the free throw line. She's a freshman out of Austin, Texas. Earns a bonus. And free throw up and in again by Jordan Holmes. Tulsa with a nine point lead. Pressure in the back court for the Golden Hurricane and the steal taken away by Reed. The whistle and a foul is going to be called again on Cincinnati. I mean, you have to notice those types of things when there's a, a player just waiting to pick off the pass. I mean, you have to see the whole floor. That just wasn't, wasn't a good decision, but it was, you know, smart of Reed to just kind of wait there for the pass. Quisenberry there with the turnover. Gianna Reed and Tulsa leads by double digits. First time a team is led by 10 points or at this contest so far with 8.04 to play. And right now really is the time either where Tulsa is going to just continue to pull away or Cincinnati is going to get some stops and say no. Pressure in the backcourt. Tulsa forced another turnover. And now Tulsa throws it away. Taken back by Mackenzie Can and Cincinnati coming back the other way. Anna Owens going to take it on her own shoulders right now, you can see, and uh, hit the back of the rim, wouldn't fall. Tulsa's uh, 24, that's Arturo Campbell. Swings the rebound now. Kelsey Grovey, leading scorer in the game at 24. As Liz mentioned, she's equaled her career high at the University of Tulsa, the junior. From outside, Jordan Holmes won't go. Free throw comes right down to uh, the rebound comes down to Mackenzie Can. Mackenzie. Feeds Molly Hill in the middle. Back it goes to Can. And Can hits a nice running jumper there. I mean, she knows when she's going to shoot. Like, she literally just catches it and shoots. It really doesn't matter what hand is in her face. So she does a good job of doing that. We're going to talk about some of the uh, top players so far in the American Athletic Conference uh, through the season here. Players of the game through the week here. And... Uh, Gabby Williams for uh, UConn uh, was uh, the freshman of the week. Yeah, she uh, scored 13 points, uh, shooting four for seven to go along with a career high seven assists against only against with one turnover and four steals against UConn on Saturday. The Huskies improved to three to three and zero all time versus the Mustangs with the win. Brianna. Brianna Stewart, the Conference Player of the Week. Boy, she just keeps adding, adding to her honors there and stuff. So, Brianna Stewart was an outstanding player, of course, for UConn in the, uh, in the Final Four for their national championship last season. Uh, no surprise here for the six-foot-four junior. Probably, uh, arguably, the best women's college basketball player in the nation right now. I would agree to that. I mean, she's just been doing everything for UConn. She is such a, <laughs> such a vital part of, of their program. I mean, she's going to really excel even after. Updated the scoring here. Uh, Molly Hill for Cincinnati with 11 points. Uh, Anna, o Anna Owens with 14 points. And uh, Mackenzie Camp with 11 points. Three in double figures for the Bearcats. For the University of Tulsa, uh, it's Kelsey Govey with a matching a career high at 24 points. Elias Turner, the only other uh, double figure player for Tulsa with 11 points. Tulsa 
Leading in this one now, 57 48, 719 to play here at the Reynolds Center. University of Tulsa on a cold final day of 2014. Temperature in the 20s outside. Good news is, though, no <laughs> snow or ice or any of that stuff. Well, and, I think you spoke too soon because I uh -oh. checked my weather this morning and it's supposed to snow tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. What a way to welcome in the new year. Yes. So if it snows, I'm blaming you That's because it, right. you said it. <laughs> Tulsa back in a hurry there and inside, nice inside pass from Holmes to trying to score. There was Artura Campbell. And foul called on uh, Tulsa's uh, Campbell there. So we'll come down the other way. That's the seventh team foul on Tulsa. So Cincinnati will get a chance to shoot free throws and going to the line is Marley Hill. Marley Hill, as we mentioned here, is 11 points. One of two on free throws, now two of three. Tina Reed, sophomore transfer to Butler Community College, gearing the offense for Tulsa, takes the three and hits it. Boom. Beautiful there. Just the, the handoff to Grovey, and then she just popped out for that three-point shot, locked her feet, and... Knocked it down, so that's good offense there. Double digits, Deanna Reed now, she has 10 in the game for TU. Tulsa leading 60-48, this one's slipping away from Cincinnati, they've gotta get something going here, there's a whistle. Foul's gonna be called on uh, Tulsa. Holding is called on Artura Campbell for TU. That is the 18th foul for the University of Tulsa. She comes out now. She's replacing the Tulsa lineup by Mariah Turner. Also coming out for TU, Jordan Holmes. She's replaced in the lineup by 23, Ashley Clark. At the free throw line, Marley Hill. This is an opportunity to call free shots. You need to hit those. Yeah, especially if, if you're not really taking care of the ball the way you should be. Things that are free, oh. you need to make them. <laughs> Big drop by Ashley Clark and rolled around the rim all the way around. It wouldn't go down for her. Oh, Owens a pass trying to get inside, but that's stolen away. Another turnover. Bad pass, and here comes TU 60 48 down to the six minute mark. We're coming down to and Golden Hurricane taking control of this basketball game. Kelsey Groby, 10 seconds on the shot clock. I'm sure Matilda Moss, the TU coach, wants to use a bunch of clock right now, Liz. Right. Use it as much as you can. Groby kind of throws up a left hander and bounces right back. Tulsa gets a fresh 30 seconds and more time to run time off the clock. And right now, for Cincinnati, you have to dedicate yourself to getting defensive stops. There's no need for offensive rebounds for Tulsa. You, have, you need to score, so you have to get the ball. Whistle and a foul inside. Marley Hill, 35 for Cincinnati, call for the foul. Her second, that's the Bearcats' ninth, which means the next foul against Cincinnati, and Tulsa's in the double bonus to shoot two free throws. At the free throw line now for Tulsa is their 6'2 senior forward, Mariah Turner, three-year letter winner here from Norman, Oklahoma, Norman North High School. That's where Matilda Moss really got her start, Norman yeah. High School. Yeah, she was at Norman High School, uh... I think I actually played Norman in high school when she was there or scrimmaged or something. But you can tell that even at Norman, she had collegiate experience because her team played like they were in college. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Mariah Turner hitting the free throws for Tulsa. They now lead 62 40. And now's another throw away. Boy, I'll tell you, it's turnovers have been the story for the Bearcats today. It's safe to say that if. If this game doesn't go in their favor, it's due to turnovers. We can say very easily they've thrown the game away. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes. without question. My gosh. Groby now with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Brady, short. Rebound for Cincinnati. They're now losing the basketball on the floor. And Tulsa picks it back up. Whitfield lost it, picking it up for Tulsa. And then another foul call on Cincinnati here. So. Bearcats just can't get out of their own way right now. They're having an awful time. Ashley Clark will get a chance to go to the free throw line to shoot two. Foul in the act of shooting. 
And the Bearcats bench just looking a little deflated, just yeah. not very energetic. And I think Tulsa's had a very steady amount of energy from the bench and on the floor throughout the game. And it's, ma it's made all the difference next Ashley, to turnovers. Ashley Clark shooting two, actually, because that was the 10th team foul on Cincinnati. We're under five minutes in Tulsa. Trying to add to their lead, and they do. 64-48 TU. Remember, this was a three, uh, six point game at halftime. Tulsa led 29-23 in the first half. Pressure on the backcourt for Tulsa. Ball is tipped, coming backward for Cincinnati and saving it is Quisenberry. And 10 seconds, there's another turnover. They could not get the ball across the half court line in 10 seconds and TU gets it on the turnover. And in some aspects, at this point, it kind of seems like they've just lost all their momentum right now. They're just trying to hang on till the end of the game because they, they just don't have a lot of energy on the floor right now. Turnover 29 for the Bearcats. A drive, no good, but a foul is gonna be called. And to the free throw line will go Ashley Clark for Tulsa again. 29 turnovers for the University of Cincinnati. 19 for the University of Tulsa. And off of those uh, turnovers, Tulsa's really uh, made a living on it today. That's been a good part of their points. Long outside shot by Can Won't go. Rebound comes down to Tulsa. Under four and a half to play. You know, I bet you one thing. I bet after this game, they will not have another 29 oh. uh, <laughs> turnover yeah. game because yeah. Jamel Elliott is not going for that. Coming down to the four minute mark, whistle and there's a foul trying to make something happen there. I believe Anna Owens is gonna be whistled for the foul. Up in between the two players, trying desperately for a steal, which you can understand. By the way, the first time you'll get a chance to see your Cincinnati Bearcats on the American Digital Network is not until January 28th. That's when Cincinnati will be hosting Houston uh, at two o'clock game, January 20th. That's the uh, for the next appearance for Cincinnati on the American Digital Network. Tulsa, meanwhile, we told you, January 10th, we'll be right back here, Liz and I, to uh, welcome Memphis in town. The Tigers taking on the Golden Hurricane at 2 p.m. January 10th tip there. Officials have stopped play for a moment here and gone over to the official scorer's table to sort something out here. 407 left to play in this one. Still not quite sure what they're trying to get in. Okay, I guess they're trying to work out some kind of mm -hmm. substitution thing, but uh, now they got it worked out though, and Tulsa's at the free throw line. One free throw coming here for Caden uh, Brady. Won't go. Bearcats the basketball. We're at the four minute mark. Anna Owens. Mackenzie Kane, the three point threat. And they need three pointers right now. Now she drives nicely. Oh, misses badly on the layup there. Had a wide open lane. Tulsa has the basketball back there as uh, Ashley Clark comes down with it. Turns it back over to Kelsey Grover, who's uh, still sitting at her uh, career high, right? Mm -hmm. 24. Yeah. Been a while since she's scored. You Brady. probably just jinxed it. Yeah, I thought it's the end of that. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kelsey. <laughs> so we get the ball in her hands. Ashley Clark, though, is driving the lane. Left hand layup is good. Good move. Yeah. Easy finish on the on the left hand side for Ashley her. Clark now goes to double figures with 10. Once again, Anna Owens trying to get her offense moving here for Cincinnati. Owens cross court pass comes all the way over to Whitfield. Whitfield in the lane and uh, throws it away. Gives it right into Mariah Turner's hands there, trying to get it inside the hill. Oh. Foul's going to be called, and some frustration setting in for the Bearcats, Liz. Understandably so, as we have a break here. The final, uh, the final media timeout at 2.54. Tulsa 66, Cincinnati 48. We'll take a look at some of these replays and some of the uh, TU action here. 
couple replays for you there. You see Tiana Reed with the easy finish. I mean, no one even came to help on the left-hand side. I think that should have been Marley Hill. There's the inbound to Kelsey Groby. Knocked down that, that long two-point shot. There's the handoff to Groby. Back to Tiana Reed with that three-point shot. Very nice finish there for Tulsa. Driving with the right hand and finishing with the left is Ashley Clark. So they've definitely opened up that lead and, and uh, advanced on the floor, you know, they've started taking care of the ball a little bit more than Cincinnati has. And I think the chemistry right now for Tulsa is just better. Let's take a quick break here before we get back to the action. 254 to play. Tulsa leads Cincinnati 66-48. You're watching American Athletic Conference Basketball, the American Digital Network. This live broadcast is brought to you by Live U Sports, the leader in turnkey live video production for sports. Powering digital sports networks, live game production and transmission, visit Live U Sports at www.liveu.tv. Our crew's done a heck of a job here today. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage of this very first meeting ever between Tulsa and Cincinnati in women's college basketball and the very first American Athletic Conference game for the University of Tulsa. And Tulsa's Made the most of it thanks to a very generous Bearcats team now with officially Liz 30 turnovers in this wow. game. That may be some kind of record yeah. since today. <laughs> one we don't want to look up. I'm sure one right. that uh, Coach Jamil Elliott doesn't want to consider either. Free throws are good there for uh, Tulsa by uh, Tiana Reed. Tulsa now with a 19 point lead and 2.51 to play. Whitfield working away in the lane, now drops it back outside to uh, Tarver, and Tarver the shot up and in. Good move by, by Tarver there. Golden Hurricane by 17, he approached the two minute mark. Inside it goes up, Turner with the left hand, nice move by Mariah Turner. Turner now, 15 points on the afternoon. Tulsa with four players in double figures, led by Kelsey Grovey with 24. Anna Owens, the basketball. She has 14 to lead the Bearcats this afternoon. Back it comes to Tulsa now. Reed with a whoa, wild left-handed shot. It hits the rim, drops through. Of course it does at this stage. <laughs> and she'll have a chance. I mean, really good move there by Reed. I mean, she's small. She has a very, like, small body and stature, but she, she likes to get in there and kind of bang a little bit. So I like to see that. And Cincinnati just looking like they're yeah. ready for it to be over. Yeah, Tulsa's excited to lead to 71 to 50 now. Reed completes her uh, three-point play. She now in, has uh, added her double-figure total. She has 14. A minute and a half to play. A shot is short, way short by Whitfield. Tulsa's Tiana Reed with the rebound. Oh, pass inside and off of the hands of Tulsa's Mariah Turner under the basket. So a turnover. And I'm, Sure, Matilda Moss wasn't happy with that. You don't need a quick pass inside when you're leading 72 50 with a minute 24 left. She wanted to run some clock, and they didn't do it. And we also have a new career high for Tiana Reed. She now has 14 points. Her career high was 12 at Arkansas Little Rock this year. So she's advancing, so that's good. Tarver loses the ball out of bounds. It goes off of uh, Tulsa's Kelsey Grovey, so the Bearcats will keep possession. 
67 seconds left to play in this one from Tulsa. Tulsa is going to improve uh, their season record. They'll even things up at 6-6 six and six and be 1-0 and in the American Athletic Conference, while Cincinnati will drop to 3-10 and 10 and 0-2 oh and in early conference play. Can tries to get the ball to Nickens, who loses it on another turnover. Back come the Golden Hurricane, and there is the all-time. There it is. Single game scoring uh, mark for Kelsey Grovey. She'd been hanging there 24 forever. Now she gets 26 points on the afternoon with that, too. And she deserves it. I mean, she worked really hard for it. She had a perfect game at one point, like five for five on the floor. So her having to new career high does not surprise me. Oh, Whitfield drives and is fouled. And Oh, we don't need a foul with 34 seconds left in this game. Well out of hand, 74 to 50. The Golden Hurricane with one of their most impressive wins of the uh, basketball season for sure. Free throws up and in for Cincinnati's Jasmine Whitfield. Whitfield completes the uh, two free throws with 34 seconds left. And they're just probably just going to let this clock run out. They might get a shot up just so they don't get a, another turnover, but um, there's no need to really run a play. Yeah. Just kind of wait for it. Only about three and a half seconds difference between the mm -hmm. game clock and the uh, shot clock here as we're down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Kelsey Grover, three. She'll take the shot outside. Won't go. Rebound comes down by Cincinnati. And that should just about do it as Mackenzie can. They up to make court, and that's it. The University of Tulsa. 74 to 52. The final score here this afternoon for TU. As you mentioned, Tulsa now evens their season record at 6-6. Six and six. Bouncing back with a loss to Arkansas. A little rock cross taken along with Liz Lay here. We're going to take a look at some of these highlights, and especially for uh, Tulsa's uh, young player that did a great job today, Kelsey Glovey, setting an all-time personal career best. Let's watch double zero in action here. I mean, there she is knocking down the three. Here she is stealing the ball, driving all the way down the left-hand side of the court, finishing easy with the layup. Right here, just attacking the basket, strong with her left hand, finishing over the basket. I mean, she really did a lot. Even right here, just a nice, swift crossover, pick it up with the right, spin back to the left, and finish. She really likes that left hand. Uh, here she is with another knockdown three. I mean, she broke her career high with 26 points today. And even right here, I mean, she's wide open, nice set feet, good follow through, focus on the basket and just knocks them down. Right there, she's running the floor with Clark, got the open on the left-hand side. So Kelsey Grovey, what an afternoon Kelsey Grovey had today here at the University of Tulsa. 10 of 13 shooting. She was two of three. Uh, from three-point range, four of six free throws, 26 points. She also added a defensive rebound to her total. So Kelsey Grovey with her all-time career best, the University of Tulsa, with 26 points. TU beating Cincinnati 74-52. We'll take a break before our post-game action starts on the American Digital Network. What do we mean by Cincinnati Smart? It's the power of first-hand experience. It's learning with the best minds and in the best organizations. Cincinnati Smart is impressing your professor and your boss in the same week. It's smart on a whole different level. Cincinnati Smart is who you become, it's your competitive edge, and you can only get it at the University of Cincinnati. Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university.
repeat it. Okay. I forgot my question. <laughs> Here with head coach Matilda Mossman, coach, congratulations on advancing one and zero in conference play. How do you feel? I, I think it's uh, it's huge. You know, it's the first game in the new conference, and as we've told our team, this is a, a, a date and a score that'll be told over and over again. But I, I really like the way our kids played today. I thought we played with a lot of energy. I thought we played with a lot of fight. Uh, we got a big lead, and then we let them come back a little bit, but we held them off. And and that was, you know, we, all those things happening in the game are things that you really want to happen in a game and see how your team's going to react. And your team actually came out with a 9-0 lead, and then Cincinnati kind of came back, and then it was back and forth for a little bit. What did you tell them at halftime to kind of bring them out with the energy that they had? Well, I think the energy has to come from them. You know, um, Anna Owens is a really good three-point shooter, really nice player. Uh, Marley Hill did a great job inside, and we just felt like if we could contain those two, then we had a chance. So, but, again, it's the energy our kids came back out with in the second half. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations again. Oh, thank you. I'm Liz Lay, and this is the American Digital Network. Network. All right, thank you, Liz. Big victory for the University of Tulsa here this afternoon. The very first meeting ever between the Bearcats and the Golden Hurricane. And uh, close at halftime, uh, Tulsa led uh, at the half 29-23. Then they outscored the Bearcats, though, 45-29 to in the second half and went at 74-52. Let's go back on the court side now with Liz Lay. I'll give you a little bit. Yeah, and career high. I'll talk about that. Liz Lay here with our player of the game, Kelsey Grovey. Congratulations on breaking your career high. What used to be 24 points, now 26 points. At one point in the game, you actually were perfect. You shot five for five from the floor. So how are you feeling? Um, I feel good. I think we just came out and we had our minds made up before the game that we were going to come out here and play as hard as we can. And I think we did that. And I think that's what got us the game. The I think you did too. And I think <laughs> you played amazing. So congratulations again on advancing to being 1-0 and in conference play. Good, Thank you. good game. Thank you. I'm Liz Lay, and this is the American Digital Network. All right, thank you, Liz. Great job this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the University of Tulsa and their very first ever American Athletic Conference game. And the very first meeting between TU and Cincinnati goes to the University of Tulsa, 74-52, outscoring uh, the Bearcats. 45-29 in the second half. Tulsa ending up with three players in double figures, led by Kelsey Grover with 26, 15 for Mariah Turner, 10 points for Ashley Clark. For the Cincinnati Bearcats, they were led by their star freshman, Anna Owens, with 14. Marley Hill had 11, as did uh, Mackenzie Can. So the University of Tulsa evens its season record at 6-6, six and six, go 1-0 in the conference. Cincinnati falls to 3-10. and 10. They go to 0-2 in the conference. Looking ahead in January, uh, the Bearcats, you fans, uh, January 3rd, Cincinnati back home to host Temple at 7 o'clock. Then they're on the road at Houston on the 7th and back home on the 10th of January for Central Florida. For Tulsa, they'll be uh, playing uh, Central Florida on Saturday, January 3rd down in Central Florida. They have a trip to Yukon on Wednesday, January 7th. Their next home game will be right back here on the 10th against Memphis. Liz and I will be back here as well to bring you that game as well. So, Liz, your impressions of uh, this Tulsa basketball team? I think they did really well, actually. I think they came out, they jumped on it, they were pushing the ball up the floor, they opened the game with a 9-0 lead. You know, they kind of pulled back a little bit and set their offense up, but I think they share the ball well. I think Kelsey Grovey had a lot to do with, you know, the offense really running successfully with her new career high of 26 points. I think overall... Minus the turnovers, I yeah. think they played well. <laughs> By the way, turnover, Cincinnati 32 in the game this afternoon. Tulsa 21, so gifts were handed all over the place well past Christmas. Yeah. It seemed like a Christmas <laughs> day here. Hey, we wish all of you a certainly a very happy new year. I want to thank Scott Railing and our entire digital crew here with the American Digital Network. And, of course, also recognize uh, Mark Hodgkin, Assistant Commissioner for Digital Media. You guys have done a great job for us today. Continue to follow American Athletic Conference basketball throughout the uh, 2014, now soon to be 2015 yes. season. Happy New Year to everyone out there. <laughs> Happy New Year. The University of Tulsa beating Cincinnati here this afternoon. The final score, TU 74, Cincinnati 52. And for Liz and for myself and for our entire crew, one more time, Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. <laughs>